Welcome to the Hughes Lane Art Walk in Uptown Waterloo. Art adds to the vibrancy of our city cores. It is often a conversation piece and encourages people to live, work, and start businesses in a certain area. In August of 2020, a new partnership between the Uptown Waterloo BIA, City of Waterloo, Uptown businesses, and local artists brought some added colour and culture here to Hughes Lane. The Hughes Lane Art Walk is similar to Vancouver's Canvas Corridor, where the back doors of businesses within the alleyway have been transformed with murals. The BIA was inspired by the placemaking ability of the project, as one of our topmost goals is to promote and beautify Uptown, making it an attractive place to visit. We also wanted to create a safe and inclusive space for visitors to access public art, perhaps in a place they wouldn't think to look for it. Additionally, the Hughes Lane Art Walk builds upon Waterloo's existing public art, including the murals located on the side of the Uptown Waterloo Parkade, as well as their Uptown Public Realm strategy and culture plan. Artists submitted their proposals through an open call competition run by the City of Waterloo during the summer. The submissions were juried based on the quality, aesthetic appeal, and connection to participating businesses. Over the middle two weeks of August, eight doors were transformed by the following amazing local artists. Lucy Bilson, Jackie Levitt, Nikolina Kupkovic, Luke Swinson, Kat Herndon, Andy and Co., Tara Cooper, and Jason Panda. And we are grateful to the following businesses and property owners who allowed us to beautify their back doors. Marbles, Hustle and Flow, Zero Waste Bulk, 21 Fur, McCabe's, King Street Trio, Bud and Sally's, and Patton Social. So with that said, let's start this virtual tour and hear what the artists had to say. Let's start here at Marbles, located at the beginning of Hughes Lane at William Street. This artist, Lucy Bilson, is a designer, researcher, and educator working at the periphery of contemporary graphic design practice. Lucy's creative practice explores the interdisciplinary space between design and art, often using her work to contest the boundaries of contemporary practice. This particular work combines experimental typography and layered sketches of local buildings to speak to the fluidity of the city's identity and the array of ways to experience physical space. Lucy tells us that the fragmented text in this mural speaks to the piecing together of public spaces as they are experienced. As well, the sketches of local buildings reference the concept of collecting personal landmarks as one navigates space. Acknowledging that the city's identity is in flux creates space for different voices and room for growth, particularly as Waterloo continues to expand and diversify. And hey, what a great place to start a conversation for the beginning of our art walk. Next, we visit Meditations on Breath by artist Jackie Levitt. Located on the back door to popular hustle and flow, Jackie provides the following words about her mural. We are all connected by invisible threads. Breath is urban air quality. And how we greet strangers, it is interdependence. Cut down a tree in a neighborhood and we all feel the difference in our lungs. Breath branches out of our bodies in ways that can be seen. Bronchioles in the lungs, tree root systems, coral structures, the breath of the ocean. Now we find ourselves at Zero Waste Ball with the mural called Enlighten. Nicolina, the artist, says it depicts a woman lighting her own light, glowing with a realization of power, and she is allowing that light to burn the barriers that were preventing her from achieving inner peace and enlightenment. Nicolina notes that one's satisfaction with life truly does come from within, and it is not dependent on outside factors. She shares that, realizing this fact has changed my life, and I hope that my mural can provoke similar thoughts in its viewers. As Uptown Waterloo continues to develop and flourish, I notice that this is due to the ambitious and inspired people adding new life to our city. We are truly lighting our own candle. Here on the two garage doors at the back of 21 Fur are Luke Swinson's latest creations. Luke is an Anishinaabe illustrator living in Kitchener, Ontario. About this piece, Luke tells us that, and I hope I'm saying these correctly, Wawa Keshi, meaning deer, and Gekkek, meaning hawk, are animals that are plentiful in our region. The busyness of everyday city life can often lead us to forget the natural beauty around us. These depictions were made as a reminder that these amazing creatures will always share space with us. Such a great way to remember we need to take nature breaks often to soothe our souls. Check out this interesting mural located on the back door of McCabe's in Waterloo, right beside the Uptown Parkade. Artist Kat Herndon notes that patterns are everywhere, in nature, in architecture, on bathroom floors. They make sense to me. They imbue the seemingly chaotic and mad world with structure and order, and I adore them. 
For this mural, my proposal was to go into the building whose door I would be painting and to take inspiration from a pattern inside and use as a base for my painting. I didn't even make it inside of McCabe's thanks to COVID-19, but I didn't need to look any further than the patio chair I sat in while I ordered my beer. That's right, my mural was inspired by the plastic patio chairs at McCabe's. Take a look at them, you'll see what I mean. Here we are at King Street Trio, beside the train tracks in Uptown. Andy and Co, the artist, has titled this mural as Spontaneous Speech, an illustrated poem that speaks to the importance of expressing and following what's truly in our hearts. Andy and Co shares that too often, the fears that our dreams and desires are too big or that they simply don't matter, creep up in our mind and keep us smaller than we know ourselves to be. May these words serve as a community reminder and inspiration to live boldly and from the heart. We now find ourselves at Bud and Sally's, formerly known as OW Sports for those who remember. Artist Tara Cooper shared the following words with us about what inspired her to paint this mural. There's a photograph of Matisse in his 70s, sitting in his wheelchair, barefoot with a pair of scissors in his hand. His gaze surveys the hundreds of colored scraps strewn across the floor of his studio. This time, a kind of pseudo-quarantine is often referred to as Matisse's second life. It follows his belt with cancer and his confinement to a wheelchair, neither of which seemed to hold his art practice back. Taking cues from Matisse and this time period, in particular the pochoir, aka stencil prints, published in Jazz, Tara's mural for Hughes Lane depicts a pattern garden based on plants that have healing properties, cowslip, lion's tooth, and safflower. Similar to Matisse, she employed the strategies of cutouts and stencils with lots of color and graphic punch. Ultimately, she shares, I would like to convey a sense of taking care within this graphic garden of ourselves, each other, and the natural environment. What a beautiful piece on which to reflect upon the history of a famous artist and the importance of our environment. And last but not least, here we are at the old Patton Social, close to the corner of Herb and Regina Streets. This colorful mural by local artist Jason Panda pays homage to Waterloo Park. The design features a tessellation, or for those of us new to the art world, a repeating pattern of polygons with dynamic shapes, gestural lines, and colors that project community, environment, and creativity. Jason tells us that tessellations, made popular by the world-renowned graphic artist M.C. Escher, illustrate incredible worlds and visualize complex mathematical principles. As an art form, viewers are constantly finding new points of interest to catch their attention as positive and negative spaces intertwine and slide together, creating intricate shapes and stories. The tessellations form, in itself, represents our community's juxtaposition of technology, arts, culture, and family as it gives importance to every aspect and piece of the puzzle. Did you know that Hughes Lane was named after the City of Waterloo's first ever woman councillor, Anna Hughes? Anna served as one of eight Waterloo council members from 1951 until she retired in 1963. She is best remembered as a go-getting Waterloo councillor who stepped outside of the 50s housewife stereotype, promoted diversity, and overall broke a lot of new ground for our city. If you'd like to visit the laneway and view the murals yourself, you'll find a map on our website at uptownwaterloobia.com. Just type into the search bar, Hughes Lane Art Walk. We are grateful to all of our project partners and especially want to thank Sonia Poeska from the City of Waterloo and Tawny Heipel from the BIA for their project leadership, as well as Don Taylor Gilders from the BIA for capturing this video. This initiative was funded in part by Regional Tourism Organization 4 through their Shareable Moment Challenge grant program. To you, the viewer, thanks for taking the time to watch this virtual tour of the Hughes Lane Art Walk and celebrating art in our community. A city's sense of place is largely imprinted in its history and culture, and we are happy this project has added to Uptown's unique ethos.